So this section deals with um, acid concentration. And acid concentration is different from the topic that we were talking about in the previous section, which was uh, strong and weak acids and strong and weak bases. You can Acid concentration basically is how much acid is dissolved in a certain amount of liquid, not whether the acid is really good at donating its protons or, or not so good at donating its protons. So acid concentration is basically measuring how acidic a liquid is and how acidic something is is basically again just measuring how concentrated the acid is in the liquid so you can see that this relates to unit 7 which was chapter 7 which we did last week where we talked all about concentration and different formulas for measuring concentration and describing concentration but here acidity is just how concentrated an acid is in a particular liquid so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, and the example that I would use here, uh, here we're just going to talk about hydrochloric acid. So there are, imagine that we have two different containers. And in the left container, I am basically adding a lot of hydrochloric acid to a certain amount of water. And again, let's just assume that all of the H and all of the CLs uh, disconnect from each other and the H pluses are donated to water. So if you could zoom in, you would see a lot of H3O plus molecules and you would see a lot of Cl minus molecules. And what you would say is the concentration of acid in this container, the concentration of HCl in this container is high compared to, let's say, this container over on the right, where I took hydrochloric acid as well, but I didn't put as much hydrochloric acid into this container on the right. Because of that, this container on the right is less acidic than the container on the left. They both contain the same types of molecules. I dissolved HCl in the container on the right. I also dissolved HCl in the container on the left. But there's less HCl over here, and because of that, there are less H3O plus molecules. There are less uh, Cl minus molecules over here. So what you say is, this container is more acidic, it has a higher acid concentration. This container is less acidic, it has a less acidic concentration. Now, if you remember from the previous unit, we described several formulas for how, how to measure concentration. Um, we had the formula for percent mass over mass, percent volume over volume, we had molarity, etc., etc. So measuring acid concentration, oh, and, and just, just as a refresher, molarity is the number of moles of whatever is dissolved divided by the number of liters of the entire mixture. That's the formula for molarity. Um, for acidity, how concentrated the acid is in a liquid, um, usually the, the concentration when we're describing acidity is uh, basically just describing how concentrated the amount of H3O plus is in your liquid. Because this is, this is basically a, a surrogate for, or, or an indirect way of measuring how much acid you threw into your liquid. So we're, we're measuring how much H3O plus is in our container. Um, and measuring acidity is almost always done using the molarity method. But it's not the straight molarity method. It's the molarity method with a twist. So just in case this was confusing, and it, it's not going to be completely unconfusing after I get done talking, but maybe this is a better way of saying it. Um, this mixture over here is more acidic than the mixture here on the right. So is there a way that we can describe how acidic this mixture is using a number? And a way of measuring how acidic this mixture is using a number? And yes, there is. The way that people measure acidity is done using the molarity method, but it's done with a twist. And I'll explain what the twist is on the next few slides. The other thing to point out is that when people measure acidity, usually they describe it in terms of H3O plus concentration. Because if you throw a lot of acid into your container, a lot of the H pluses get donated to water and you have a large amount of H3O plus running around in your container. If you throw less acid in, the container is less acidic, there are less H pluses donated to water, which means there are less H3O pluses. So usually acidity is described using molarity, and it's usually described by describing the amount of H3O plus that's running around in your liquid. It's described by... Uh, Acidity is usually described by describing the concentration of H3O plus in your liquid. So that, that will be important as well. So 
Measuring acidity. One thing that I, that I will point out to you is that when you dissolve an acid into a liquid like water, the number of moles of acid dissolved in your solution is usually very small. Even for concentrated solutions, even for highly acidic solutions, the number of moles dissolved per liter is actually is almost always pretty small. So let's imagine a situation over here. Let's imagine that I threw a fair amount of acid, a fair amount of hydrochloric acid, into this container of water. And those uh, H pluses from the hydrochloric acid were all donated to water, and they turned many of the water molecules into H3O plus. But let's say that even though this is a very acidic solution, I actually only threw in 0.002 moles of hydrochloric acid into one liter of water. If I dissolved 0.002 moles of hydrochloric acid, uh, let's just say that I dissolved that little amount, that many moles of hydrochloric acid into water. And let's uh, imagine a different situation over here where I threw in less hydrochloric acid. So this container here is less acidic than the one on the left. And let's say that under these circumstances, in this container, I only put in 0.0002 moles of hydrochloric acid into one liter of water. So over here, I threw in 10 times as much hydrochloric acid because there are only two zeros after the decimal point, and over here there are three zeros after the decimal point. So this one, 10 times more concentrated than the container on the right. So the, the question is, can you describe the acidity or the, the acid concentration in the container on the left, and can you describe the acid concentration in the container on the right numerically? One way of asking this question is, what's the molar concentration of H3O plus in the container on the left? What's the molar concentration of H3O plus in the container on the right? Now, uh, this thing over here I have not discussed before, so I'm, I'm bringing in something new here. Whenever you see a chemical formula surrounded by square brackets, the square brackets mean the molar concentration of whatever is inside of the parentheses. So square brackets H3O plus means what is the molar concentration of H3O plus in your mixture. So again, what's the molar concentration of H3O plus in this container and what is it in the container on the right? Well, if you remember, the formula for molarity is the number of moles divided by the number of liters. And point for the container on the right, the molarity is going to be 0 0.002 divided by 1. And 0 0.002 divided by 1 is just 0 0.002 again. So the concentration of acid in the container on the left is 0 0.002 molar. Or if you wanted to write it in scientific notation, you could say that the concentration of acid on, in the container on the left is 2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. You can do the same thing for the container on the right. It's the number of moles, 0 0.0002, divided by the number of liters, which is one liter. That turns out to be 0 0.0002 molar. So the acid concentration here, if you wanted to describe it numerically, is 0 0.0002 molar. If you wanted to write it in scientific notation, it's 2 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. This, uh, the acid concentration in the container on the left, is 10 times more concentrated. It's 2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar acid compared to 2 times 10 to the minus 4 molar acid. So hopefully you can appreciate that this number here is 10 times bigger than this number over here. Now you might think that, okay, we're done. We can describe the concentration of acid in our containers using the molarity method. And you did that on, on, this, on these two types of problems. Uh, what might be earth-shattering news to you, however, is that chemists, at least the chemist who came up with the currently uh, most used method for measuring acid concentration, the chemist who came up with this, uh, this modern method did not like these types of numbers either. They didn't like scientific notation, they didn't like writing these uh, very tiny numbers um, in this way. So. Basically, the person who came up with the currently accepted method for describing acid concentration um, tried to come up with a new method, but still tried to use the molarity method in some way. So the new method is going to be described on the next slide. Basically, um, just, to, just to bring in the numbers from the previous slide, the container on the left, the acid concentration was 2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. The container on the right, the acid concentration was 10 times lower. It's 2 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. And there is a more modern method that 
um, of describing acid concentration numerically that kind of deals with this, these uh, molar concentrations that I'm showing you, but, but manipulates them in some way. So the way to think about it is the person who came up with the modern method basically did not like dealing with scientific notation and did not like dealing with these tiny numbers. So they basically asked themselves, how can I turn a number like 2 times 10 to the minus 4 or 2 times 10 to the minus 3 into a more understandable or more normal number? Well, why don't I take the logarithm of my really large or really tiny number and I can make that I can turn that number into a more understandable one so this is why I was bringing up logarithms at the beginning of this unit the person who came up with this method basically said look I don't like this number why don't I turn it into a more understandable one by taking the logarithm of that number so for most of you and probably for me too it seems like making a bad problem and, and making it even worse um, however th this is basically what they did so as an example let's take the logarithm of 2 times 10 to the minus 3 molar over here the logarithm of 2 times 10 to the minus 3 if you punch it into your calculator turns out to be minus 2.7 so you can think of this person as saying look I don't like the number 2 times 10 to the minus 3 I want to make it more understandable so why don't I take the logarithm of that number it turns out to be minus 2.7 I can understand minus 2.7 a lot better than 2 times 10 to the minus 3 so why don't I describe the concentration of acid in my container on the left not as 2 times 10 to the minus 3 but why don't I just call it minus 2.7 at least that's more understandable and so that person could have left uh, well enough alone right there, but they went one step further. And they basically said, look, there's a minus sign here, and I don't really like minus signs either. They're, they're a little bit confusing as well. Why don't I try to get rid of the minus sign? And the easiest way to get rid of the minus sign, as far as I'm concerned, is take my answer here and multiply it by minus 1. Right? So they say, why don't I take, even though this could be used as a way of numerically describing the acid concentration, I don't like the negative sign that's showing up, so if I multiply my answer by minus 1, I will get rid of the minus sign, and I will turn my minus 2.7 into a plus 2.7. And that is basically what they did. They said, look, I don't like scientific notation, I'm going to take the logarithm of that, uh, whatever number I get for acid concentration and molarity, I'll get some more reasonable number. However, because the numbers tend to be very small, I'm going to end up with negative numbers. I want to get rid of the negative number, so why don't I take my answer and multiply it by minus 1. And so then, if I wanted to describe the acid concentration of my container on the left, I could say that it's plus 2.7. And if you're still awake at this point, you might ask yourself, plus 2.7 what? What are the units of plus 2.7 if it's being used to describe acid concentration? It turns out that the units are units called pH. And many of you probably have heard the term pH used before. Many of you probably have a sense that it is associated with um, measuring acidity and pH is the the commonly accepted way of measuring acid concentration today however the formula for pH the actual formula is to find the molar concentration of H3O plus that's what these square brackets around H3O plus mean once you have the molar concentration you take the logarithm of the molar concentration it gives you a more understandable number however this number is almost always negative you'd like to get rid of the negative so you multiply your answer by minus one and whatever number you get out is a numerical description of the acid concentration and the units of that numerical concentration uh, concentration are units of pH. So that is a mouthful, uh, it may be hurting your head at the moment, however that is what pH is. There's actually, believe it or not, there's even a slightly more technical uh, formula for pH, but unless you are a chemistry major you will never have to know it. This is close enough to uh, the, the true, true formula. So pH is minus 1, that's what the minus sign there is for, times the logarithm of the H3O plus concentration in units of molarity. So again, probably a mouthful, and the, brack the square brackets around H3O plus mean molar concentration of H3O plus. So um, in, in the next couple of slides, I'm going to sort of talk about pH in more general terms, but th this basically is pH. Uh, 
Oh, and so again, this is just sort of a summary of what pH is. pH is just a way of measuring the concentration of acid in a solution numerically. Um, and, and that's why, what I mean by quantifying. Quantifying just means numerically. pH is a way of saying numerically how acidic a liquid is. Um, the smaller the number is when you're talking about pH, the more acidic it is. And again, this can be confusing to people because people usually think the bigger the number is, the more of something it is. But in this case, this is kind of like, uh, I guess, like golf or something like that, even though I don't golf. Um, the smaller the number, the more acidic the liquid is. The bigger the number, the less acidic it is. So if the pH is a larger number, then it means less acidic. Um, and if you want to think of it this way, less acidic equals more basic. So the higher the pH, the more basic something is. So this deals with how much base there is, how much uh, base material there is that we discussed earlier in this unit.